What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. I realized immediately by so many different things, by the intro song, by the stuff in the background that says NBA bit that we we have we need new branding. Uh, we probably need new uh, new intro video and we need a name for this specific show. Uh, so we're going to workshop this, but I'm very excited uh, for tonight. We've been talking about it for the last couple of weeks. Uh, every Thursday, we're going to be firing out some WNBA content. This is going to be our first one. This one's live. Next week is going to be, uh, it's still going to go up Thursday at 7, but it's going to be a pre tape thing with our friend Kevin Forch. Uh, but I'm very excited for our inaugural, our very first one. We have the two five people from the Let the Girls Play pod. My friends, Amelia Bain and Kelsey Bailey joining. Hi, how are we doing? Hey, so great! That music. I'll be sad if you change it. I was, I was grooving backstage. Yeah, I think great. we we just gotta just put a W. We just gotta add a W in front of it. I think I think it would be fine. Yeah, shout out uh, Veronica Peron who put that together for us. But I do, I like that a lot too. I like that a lot. Um, but and I like you both a lot too. I'm glad, I'm glad you guys came. We on. like you a lot. This is great. Uh, so i for a little background, we started the, we started like I was uh, involved in it. The let the girls play pod started last season, right? Was it like towards the playoffs? Exactly. It was during the playoffs, um, right in the heat of the New York Liberty. Uh, we jumped on the band. Well, I jumped on the bandwagon and we started the, we started podcast. How's that, uh, how's that experience been, uh, thus far? It's been yeah. great. Yeah. Our, our whole thing is like, you know, I became a fan of the WNBA last year. Uh, so I am learning. Amelia has been a fan for a while. So we uh, sort of are learning about the league together. So I think it's like a great time for people to find our podcast as a lot of people are coming to the WNBA now. Uh, and we don't talk stats. We don't talk anything no, real. Vibes. We talk. It's all it's vibes, good. baby. Yeah. It's all yeah. vibes. And and we're non-experts, so it's a uh, it's not an intimidating entry point to the WNBA at all. Like everybody yeah. is welcome. Yeah, and I, so I uh, pinned in the chat uh, the link to the Let the Girls Play uh, pod. You can find uh, some of the other stuff too in the description to their YouTube and their Instagram. But it does say in the description two non-experts, and then also in all caps, not experts. So I do like <laughs> I like that you you made sure it was super clear, <laughs> not experts. Well, Amelia, were you a Liberty fan from the beginning too, or uh, was it Liberty because of location? Yeah, I mean, I think because of location, that's how I got into the Liberty. But yeah. I guess 2021, I got really into, I didn't get season tickets, but I went to, I think, every home game. Yeah. And they were just like a kind of young, scrappy team. Um, so now the Liberty have become, they've like transformed into this like juggernaut of a team. So it's been a cool, it's been a good ride for the last three years for sure yeah it's been it's been super fun for me uh my my wife is a big uh liberty fan and a, a, a big women's college basketball fan as well and so and i'm just a basketball fan in general like if we're at the ymca i'll still probably watch like a rec league game <laughs> no matter what uh and so i'm always down to go and it 
it is infectious in Barclays specifically, uh, where it is just like the vibes are so good in there. And this is before they were a super team too. This was like, you know, in the year where they got knocked out by the Chicago sky, like they were still like, it was a scrappy team, but it is so fun in the Barclays. And I've gone to so many Nets games there, and it couldn't be more different. Uh, it's where such the Nets, a different vibe. yeah. And I know part of it is that you know, like you can't get in the upper bowl yet, mm -hmm. uh, and so it's a little bit more intimate. But just the, just everybody seems way more invested in the team, and it's like it was for me. It's been like a really fun. Uh, almost like intoxicating time to get involved in it because I've just the, the vibes are just so good. Totally. And I think like when Amelia, when you came in, it was when they first started playing at Barclays. Like they were under new ownership. Mm. Previously, the Knicks, like Madison Square Garden Entertainment or whatever it is, owned them and were making them play up in like Westchester County in like a rec center, like basically a glorified YMCA. So I think like Joe Sai just put the right money into it and made it like a true party. Yeah, Joe, Joe Sai spending some money. We love to see it. Um, all right. What what I was hoping to do today, we're going to talk about the W uh, NBA draft because you both were graciously uh, uh, brought me along. Also, I will say I listened to your most recent episode yesterday and it was that was a fun reveal of you finding that the tickets arrived and that you had an extra one. <laughs> and so for the fact that that happened after the draft, it was kind of fun to be like, oh, cool. That ended up being my ticket. Mm -hmm. That was you. Absolutely. So we're going to talk Thanks. about the uh, and then we'll uh, maybe we'll hit some storylines and then close out with uh, if you are new to the W, how to uh, find a team. We'll have some prompts, but let's uh, we got to talk about the draft because that is probably one of the more surreal experiences I've ever had in my life. So thank you for for uh, setting that up for me. But I get I don't know, like, well, I'll just throw it to you. Like, what, what were some of like the, the takeaways for you while you were there? Either one. I mean, it, it was one of the best nights of my life, probably just like just being like in the mix with all of those players. And also we were just sitting one row away from our one aisle away from Don Scaly, Kim Mulkey, like these huge, I mean, icons. Um, it was so it was incredible. And I'm not even talking about basketball yet. As you can see, I'm just talking <laughs> about vibes, people. Um, it was amazing. It felt I felt bad that our seats were better than Don Staley's. Like, I felt like we did something wrong. I know it was very. I don't know how we did it. We ended up, we ended up sitting in the very front row, which I guess were not good seats in that we couldn't really see anybody on stage. But we were like pretty much on stage. Like yeah. we were in the broadcast. Yeah. yeah. It's like going to a movie theater, except there were like when you sit in the first row. But there were perks to that, right? Like yeah. when the when you sit in the first row, there's no real perks to the movie. But we had perks where we were. Uh, I mean, we were on TV just the entire night. Mm -hmm. uh, it, yeah, that was that was that was pretty bizarre. Um, we were like a ass level for some <laughs> of the greatest basketball players and basketball coaches. Like that's our view was like ass level, <laughs> which I think is I an know. honor to be honest. It is, and you have to imagine that like Caitlin Clark, especially, is like everyone's so excited about her. She's going to have an amazing career. And when she retires in like 20 years and they show her getting drafted, Mike, you're going to be peeking out from right behind her. That's how special. Yeah. yeah I'll forever. be. You're part and, of the story what, forever. And like truly will probably be in my late sixties when that, <laughs> when that happens, <laughs> Yes. which I now want to throw up. Yeah. It is. That was, that was really wild to me. Like I had so many people reach out after the fact, really because uh, you all shared something on Instagram. And then I had friends being like, Oh, I inadvertently took a photo of you. I didn't know that I took a photo of you. And then they like zoom in and they're like, there you are. You were behind Holly Rowe uh, the whole time. <laughs> yeah, the the uh, sitting, uh, just staring at people's butts uh, was a little, uh, that was weird. I, it, it was weird because you could see through the chairs. I, I don't yeah. think I envisioned that. I didn't think that the chairs were going to be see-through. That was pretty funny. Yeah. Um, what, what, any, any other like, I guess like as people were, were getting selected, were there any sort of uh, moments that like, now that we're like a few days away from it, right? Cause I think in the moment it kind of like washes over you pretty quickly, but were there any like specific, specific like draft picks or uh, selections that, I don't know, that like jumped out at you now a few days later? Yeah. I think one of the biggest uh, like surprises was um, JC Sheldon, a player for Ohio state. She went a lot earlier in the draft than 
people thought she would. Uh, she went like ahead of uh, Aaliyah Edwards from UConn, which was like yeah. a huge surprise. Uh, and then I think just like the amount of players from France in that first round yeah. really bumped so yeah. many people that I thought were going to be first round picks. Some got bumped to third round. It was it was really surprising. I think that's one of the things that um, maybe uh, again us casuals. Uh, I'm not. I don't mean us. Us. I mean me and mm -hmm. the people in the, the chat. chat. Yeah. The ch specifically the chat, uh, yeah. but might not know is that the, you know, there's only, there's 12 W teams right now. I know expansion seems to be right around the corner, but there's only 12. And so when they invite, you know, like the red carpet uh, of the, the players who are in the draft, if something like that happens where all of a sudden two people, two players from France get drafted, you're now, that's two people who are sitting on stage that are not going into the first round at that point. Cause I think they invited like, was it like 14 or 16, maybe? I think it was um, 16. Yeah. Cause there was like four people who I think went in the second and then one went all the way to the third round. And I was like, Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I feel yeah. bad for her. It is. It's. It is really tough to to see when you're in the room. You don't notice it until you get to around pick eleven or twelve, and then you can like feel it. You can feel it from the players who haven't been selected yet. But I do. I think that is that speaks to uh, like the competitiveness of the W right now because there are only twelve teams. There's only so many roster spots. Like I remember, I think is it Crystal Dangerfield, uh, one rookie of the year two years ago, uh, and I think she's been on like five teams since that. Like she's bounced yeah. around uh ridiculously after that and it just speaks to just how competitive the w is right now and how like few roster spots are available totally and that's yeah. the thing that i'm i think is like a lot of people are gonna learn like they're so excited to see these draft spots people like are buying jerseys for players yeah. that like they might not make it out of training camp like i don't understand like people got in the kate martin las vegas aces oh. jersey i'm like that's well that'll be a good yeah. one item because i don't know if she'll make it out of training camp yeah yeah, I, I was doing the math earlier. I do math. Um, there was, <laughs> oh, like, whoa, there's, brag. Yeah, <laughs> brag. Relax. But, like, you know, there's 144 roster spots in the whole WNBA, and there's 30 NBA teams, and they have 15 players on a roster. Is that right, Mike? Yep. Think, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's it's like, like a couple G League spots, but yeah. Yeah, it's like way, way more. So it's, yeah, it is so competitive. And it's also a shame because there are players that like were on maybe not on stage but got drafted the other night that it's so exciting but like the odds of them making a roster are just like really slim right um, i i mean yeah. i think that that caitlin martin example is so good because I, that was such a memorable moment where i did not expect someone sitting behind us to get drafted like it did really in that moment it felt like at any time Anyone could get drafted. It could have been <laughs> yeah. drafted. They saw but, me between Holly Rose legs. And they're saying she's going she, to the she, Chicago she, sky. She's got it. She, she's got game. Coach but, her up. They, but truly, like that might be that might be the extent of like I mean, I hope not, but that might be the extent of Caitlin Martin's W career. Like she's going to the defending champs who are already super loaded. And I like I don't know if a second round and I know they because they had like two or three second round picks. Like mm -hmm. I don't you know, I don't know yeah. if that the likelihood of that of of Caitlin like seeing real time with the ace doesn't mean she won't have a W career, but I do. I think that's like a good point. Like there's a lot of people who get drafted that night where you're like, Oh, your dream came true. You're not on the team come, you know, August. Yeah, totally. It is. It's super competitive, which is exciting that expansion is coming around the corner. Do you, so I know they announced, right? Like uh they said uh Nashville, potentially Nashville, Toronto, except they don't like uh, you can't fly commercial internationally that often, so we can't do that. Uh, Philly, I think it was on the table. They listed South Miami as a city, which I thought yeah. was an interesting choice South instead Florida. of actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, South Florida. Jesus. Yeah. I, I said that earlier. going to do it in Clearwater, where all the Scientologists are. <laughs> yes. Old Scientologists. That's, Needs that's something to do with AC, you know? It's yeah, that's, time. There's that's AC, true. Get them inside. Mm -hmm. They have great um, beaches, though. They have great yeah. beaches. Um, there, there is a confirmed um, Bay Area team expansion right. team yeah. already happening. Yeah. yeah. So that that will be two California teams, right? Sparks and uh, and um, and what the Bay Area team will be. Yeah. So I do yeah. think like bringing two new teams, I think, will be good, especially because I, I think a lot of like relatively new W fans fell, or relatively new women's basketball fans maybe fell in love with a lot of these like college team runs, and then they want to continue to follow their players. So I think like seeing some expansion will probably be good for the game. And clearly it's needed. Like if a rookie of the year is off the team, 
the next year. That's I, I remember we were lucky enough. Uh, Crystal Dangerfield came on uh, one of our shows oh, gosh, cool. like two years. It was like right after her rookie year because um, she had some like deal with WNBA Top Shot, I think. And then they came on whatever. Um, but it, I remember being like, oh, cool. We're Crystal Dangerfields now. Uh, Dangerfield fans now. And then like truly was on another team like right after that. And then yes. on another team like two weeks later, it was it was it was wild. Yeah. To see that. It's wild. And even like the number one draft pick from a few years ago who went to the wings is not even in the league anymore. Yeah, Sorry. Stephanie it's, Stephanie Suarez Suarez. Um right? Charlie wow. Collier, right? Oh yeah, Charlie Collier. Charlie Stephanie Collier. Suarez was on an injury for a year, but yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. It's just it's they so just, They kind of expanded even more. But it, would someone you, in the was, chat said bring back the comets. Yes. I agree. agree. Yeah. Hard Should agree. I, DJ local Houston Houston native. Um, yeah, I, I would, I would love to bring, to bring back the comments, but I, I, what I think is going to be interesting is seeing like, again, there's a lot of excitement around this draft. Clearly the most people watch this W draft than previous drafts by like a million percent. I think like when they yeah, showed yeah. the chart, it was crazy. Yeah, crazy. Um, so, but I wonder like if people are going to be like, wait, what the hell? Why aren't they, <laughs> why aren't they getting playing time or why aren't they on this team? And they're going to learn like quickly how competitive the W is. And I think, which is. Like it's a good thing and a bad thing. It's it's bad that you're not going to see those people get as much playing time as you'd like to see. Uh, but it's a good thing. I think people will be surprised how like strong the product is. Yeah, and I think there's also like something. There's some players who have been playing for like a real long time where I just think that they should be forced be careful, into retirement. Kathy, be careful. I, no. I, I mean, I love Diana Taurasi. Yeah. She's the goat, but I think she's holding on to a spot that could go to somebody else yeah. and. You know, she should have retired last year when she got her 10,000 point or just like go out on top. You know, now, that was my favorite thing about the DT dialogue, which I think DT and Sue do an incredible job. I'm, they should be broadcasting a bunch. So I'm fun. Here for, yeah, so fun. But my favorite thing about her being like, oh, it's going to be tough when they get in the league. And I wanted to be like, not if you're covering them, DT. You've been lit up for two straight years. You've been a defensive liability. What are you talking about? Like, it will be tough when they play other teams for sure. <laughs> but it's like, come on. I'm with you, though. I'm with you, though. Um, Wait, were you all? Oh, okay. Here's a question from Tesla in the chat. Were, were you both uh, sports fans, uh, in jet, like broad sports fans in general, uh, prior to getting into the W? Or is the W like the entry point for you both? I would say I was pretty broad. Amelia is definitely more of a sports fan, follows the NBA and baseball. So I'll let Amelia talk yeah. about her. <laughs> yeah, I used to work um, work for ESPN, just like in a very small way doing like, I did like quality control for live streams. So I watched sports and sports radio shows like eight hours a day. Um, uh, so like so sorry. NBA, NFL coverage, like, you know, all those guys that talk. You know, I, I watched them a lot. So I feel like I consumed a lot of, I knew everything about the NBA without having to really like try that hard. Um, but I also enjoy it, you know, and I'm a big baseball fan. The most boring sport, but God, I love it. Are, uh, for it. What what team, are you Mets, Yankees? I, I'm an Orioles fan. Oh, so okay. I'm from, I'm from Virginia originally. So that's, yeah. That that's that's a better answer. That's, a, that's way more likable than... <laughs> Yeah, the in my opinion, and picking the wrong New York team. Yeah, yeah exactly. I will say, like becoming a WNBA fan, I'm learning a lot more about the NBA. So I'll text mm. Amelia every once in a while and be like, "This joking <laughs> guy is funny," or like whatever. I love like, him. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. this one owns a coffee company. That's cool. Like, <laughs> which I know is probably the most basic information. No, that's I good. Know about people, but I, you know. I don't think I have it here. I have a sweatshirt from that company. I was hoping to pull it out right now, but I, I don't have it next to me. Uh, what's it? Uh, the big smiling face. face. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Big face. Big there face. You go, big face. Yeah. Um, all right, cool. Was any last last minute draft thoughts, anything else that we need to say uh, about the draft? I don't, I feel like I'm forgetting something. I brought this up to you both. I think the, sorry, I asked if you have anything else and then I started <laughs> telling a story. So I'm going to shut up. Is there anything else? <laughs> Um, I mean, we might get into this when we talk about like what folks might look for in a new team, but Angel Reese and Camila Cardoso mm -hmm. are, are now teammates, which I think is very exciting. Um, yeah, and that I, I kind of expected, but to see it happen live was a thrill. I love yeah. them both. Yeah. That was pretty cool. Especially cause they, you know, they like rivals for the last couple of years and then 
that goes once you start getting paid that goes away very quickly mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> yeah yeah what about for you kelsey i'm trying to think if there was anything else i mean i think it was just like so it was just like a party like just being there i know it was their first time ever in that large of a venue like being able to sell that many tickets to the draft i know you said nba like did it at barclays mm -hmm. uh so i think it's cool to be able to see them take up more of a footprint for like these you know milestone moments throughout a uh, season so it was just very it was very exciting to see them like sell out and it was it, it was awesome it did get me really excited about what this year is going to look like because I, I was getting a little nervous with all of the like the dialogue around Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese in South Carolina and being like, this is what's going to propel the W to the, and I was just like, can we just relax? Like, just like, let this happen organically. It's not going to happen overnight. Uh, and then now there's like 10% of my brain. That's like, maybe it will happen overnight because so many more people, like I saw uh, something from the mystics today where they were like, we're going from like a 45, a uh, hundred seat arena to like a 19 K seat arena for the, for the fever game or whatever. I, I, it's just, it was really cool to see it feel like it felt like a moment was happening. You know, it felt, and that's what it felt like in the room. I mean, the room, the room felt really cool. It was good. They did a good job. Yeah. They did a good job. Well, and again, thank you for letting me be a part of that. Cause that was that was awesome. That was my of fun. course. Uh, the one thing that like, I getting a confirmation email and and Kelsey <laughs> getting two tickets by accident because you had yeah. to be there with like it was you, so, can, it was you can thank my stupid brain for that one. <laughs> it was incredible. It was incredible. Uh, the one thing I was gonna say, I really the when I I went to run to the bathroom at one point and like walking like through Paige Becker's talking to multiple people and then feeling starstruck in a way that I was like, Oh, I need to get a photo. And then I was like, Oh, I'm 39. Yeah. <laughs> like, I need to have a child with me in order to pull this off. Like yeah. I can't just like, get... Paige, what's up? How was history class? Let's get yeah. one. <laughs> like, They'll put you on a list for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Oh, wait, oh my yeah, God. Wait. I forgot. Wait, I forgot. The other great thing about the draft, um, Jake from state farm. Yeah all over the place the first person caitlin clark hugged after she got drafted was jake from state farm which is both a wonderful thing and also like insane yeah. product placement yeah, <laughs> probably that's nice funny yeah. state farms ever spent you know that's truly cool. honestly they're gonna be showing that clip forever i'm telling you to be mike and jake yeah. from state farm yeah. <laughs> in the like career retrospective the two men of the wmba yeah. our yeah. two wmba daddies that's what it's about. Yeah. We have to have a man like in some way be important in this league. I got to tell you though, I think we are at the point that we know who Jake's from State Farm is without a red suit. Yeah. Like I don't need you in the clown costume. I know who you are, Jake. Like, no, I'm talking you anywhere. Yeah. yeah. Corner of my eye. I've got you, Jake from State Farm. Uh, I was like, come on, man. We don't need this. It's not about you, Jake. It's not about you, Jake. I, I didn't wear a red suit, you know? <laughs> Um, all right, let's, let's talk about some, let's move on to, uh, this season. And I don't know, I, what I wanted to do is just kind of like, what are some of the storylines that you all are excited about heading into? I know we have the defending champs, the aces, the, and the Liberty. That is like the extent of my knowledge of, of teams. So well, no, I mean, I know who the teams are, but of like the players on them. So what, what are some of like the storylines that you, you both are jacked up about heading into this year? I think the one of the biggest things I'm excited for is uh, Kalia Copper, uh, former MVP from Chicago Sky, got traded to the Phoenix Mercury. Uh, so she will be playing with a player named Sophie Cunningham, who is the scrappiest little white girl that just gets in fights with everyone. There is an iconic photo of her doing of Kalia Copper doing like an Iverson step over Sophie Cunningham after like throwing her to the ground so i'm very excited for these uh, i think that we already talked about this but like on our podcast but the mercury have like the biggest shit talkers the people yeah. who get in the most fights like it's gonna be i'm i'm so excited to see how that team just like shakes out with yeah. all these different personalities i think you're looking for like elite trash talk this is your team if you want yeah. a team that's just gonna be like yeah. And yeah we're now in like year three of famously bad vibes in phoenix right Oh, cursed vibes in Phoenix. Yeah. But I think this is going to turn it around. I think that yeah. they've got, and it's going to be like so much negative that it's a positive. 
Yeah, they got rid of the girl that was always fighting with um, Sarah Diggins Smith is going to Seattle and yes. uh, notoriously Diana Taurasi hated her. So they'll do anything for Diana Taurasi. So it will be interesting to see. There was enough stuff going on with Skylar Diggins Smith that I, without knowing a lot of what was going on, there was just enough that I was like, I think I'm on Skylar Diggins Smith's side. And I didn't, I wasn't sure why. I just was like, I don't like how everyone else is acting in this. So I'm going to take the side of Skylar Diggins Smith. Um, I'm excited Seattle for girl. her to, to go to Seattle. I think she's going to be, have like, I don't know. She's reunited with a former college teammate in seattle i think it's just going to be a better fit for her i'm glad she's out of the desert out of the valley yeah out they're out the valley in seattle like because i know so seattle had brianna stewart they had sue bird they had like a fun little run and then it seemed to be like a little bit of a step back year but seattle is one of the teams that that opens the the bank vaults a little bit right like don't they spend money on their their team and their like facilities i was seeing something today they just like redone uh yeah, like their yeah. entire practice facility and stuff. So are they like primed to kind of take a step up this year? I, I Yeah, I think so. I think, like you said, they invested like, I think $61 million in a new practice facility. They got a lot of really, they got Neka Agumake from the um, Los Angeles Spark. So I think they put in a lot of money to be able to get a lot of really great trades because last year was obviously a rebuilding year with so many people either injured or you know, Sue being gone, uh, Stewie being gone. So I think it'll be interesting to see yeah. if they can be NECA, great again. NECA, who was at the draft, we saw NECA, um, is the Players Association president. So mm. I feel like there's just going to be, I don't know, there'll be a good vibe bringing NECA to Seattle too. I feel like that just kind of elevates everything. Um, well, I so think yeah. too, like when they see – uh, just based on the understanding of rich people, when like rich people see other rich people spend money, they're like, oh, we have to spend that money. So I am hopeful, like seeing those, like a team like Seattle invest some money into their organization that other teams would then turn around and do the same. Uh, especially I do think if they see like ratings get a little boost at the beginning of the season, everybody likes to be a copycat and, and jump on top of that. So that would be cool. That is fun. I forgot that NECA went to Seattle as well. Uh, Tesla again in the chat was saying <clears throat> they need to tell the stories about them off the court as well. Any players of top of mind, uh, any players top of mind that have compelling stories you've come across, which I guess could fall under our storylines. I, I don't know. Is there anybody that uh, you find? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. It feels like you had something ready. No, I, I was just, I was just um, acting out deep thought, I think. Um, okay. Just thinking about yeah. It. <laughs> I was ready to vamp for you too. I was like gearing up. I was gearing up yeah. for vamping. Um, I mean, I could try one. I could try one. I do think that um, the compelling stories off, I always, it's like a running joke on our podcast. I'm always bringing up the Nigel Laney of the New York Liberty. She yes. is um, just an amazing player. She played at Rutgers. She got injured early in her career, I think, had an ACL tear. Um, was cut from teams, I think cut from multiple teams, and then came back, uh, had a most improved player year in the Wubble in 2020, and then became an all-star the next year for the Liberty. Um, and so I think, uh, I guess off the court, one thing I want to note is her mom is really amazing, is often at the games, was an incredible college player herself, like probably would have been a professional player if there had been the WNBA at the time. So, um, yeah, just, I, I'm always talking about, but I'll never shut up about the Nigel Laney. I love her. She's awesome. She's awesome. I like that is yeah. one of the like I because you know going to the games you're like okay I, I'm I'm ready for Sabrina to knock down a thirty footer I'm ready for Stewie to take over, uh, and John Cole Jones obviously is like a beast, but Laney is like it, like an energy bomb. Which yeah. I and like I feel like she can just decide, hey, I'm gonna get the next four rebounds. Like I'm just gonna get them. Like no matter yeah. where I am on the court, she's so fun to watch. I do. I enjoy her quite a bit. I think um, Dee Dee Richards has an interesting story. She was injured in college and was unable, like, lost the ability to walk. Like during her professional oh. college career, was like, uh, I think sat out like a year because she literally was paralyzed and was had to 
learn how to walk again, like be able to play again, and then to be able to be drafted. She played for the Liberty for a bunch of years, uh, played in Australia, and now she's playing for the Mystics this season, just was drafted to the Mystics. Uh, but just like an insane story, uh, there's a really great documentary, if anybody wants to learn more about the start of the WNBA, uh, called Unfinished Business. Um, but yeah, she has like an amazing story, wow. I think, just from like all that she's overcome to be able to play professional basketball uh in the WNBA for being unable to walk it's crazy I didn't, I didn't know that where did she play in college because I remember seeing her mm, I, she I, I, in Baylor I think Baylor yeah because I, yeah. I remember seeing her play in college and then I remember when she was on the Liberty but yeah she always wore a leg sleeve too I remember mm -hmm. that about her wow I did not know that that's crazy yeah she also has great vibes if you want to like a oh. just a good vibes player yeah uh Sydney Colson of the Las Vegas Aces is one of the funniest people to follow on social media. Yeah. Does great content. I think any Las Vegas Aces player, I would recommend you follow them yes. because the yeah. vibes are, they're so funny. They're so fun. They all have great chemistry. Asia Wilson, I think is amazing as well. And also just, just the like, funniest. So yeah. They're so, I think that's why one of the reasons they're so good is that they all get along so well. Like their chemistry yeah. is, they're, I mean, they have amazing talent on the team, but also they've been playing together for so many years. I feel like they just have just such a good vibe going. Yeah. I got to tell you, I really did enjoy everybody making fun of Kelsey Plum, though, for the popcorn thing uh, yeah. last <laughs> week. I don't know if that was on your feet as well, but I really yeah. did. Like, they're like, oh, when everybody says they get that funny friend. And I was like, yeah. that's great. That was great. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I used to follow Kelsey Plum on Instagram, but I, I had to stop because I, I felt I was like scrolling and there was too many. Um, I, I was just I there was a lot of body there was a lot of body on there and i was like i just i don't sit next to my wife and i'm like scrolling on the phone i was like i don't know yeah. if I, I shouldn't be doing that so, but, you gotta you gotta get your wife to follow kelsey plum no yeah. she you does just, you but just it's peek like, over every once in a while mm -hmm. it's That'll usually it's like out of the peripheral you know it's like out of the peripheral <laughs> yeah. and it's like what's that i'm like oh, no no it's kelsey plum i follow kelsey plum. i also like darren waller like i like them both <laughs> um yeah the aces are super fun asia wilson's hilarious i'm such an asia wilson fan and yeah. and the and i know there's a lot of discourse around this right now which it could be a fun thing to talk about because they just announced that caitlin everybody decided hey let's make fun of how much caitlin clark is going to make and then they were like then she got some money and they were like well we actually don't like that either uh and the conversation has been around asia wilson getting a sneaker soon like why doesn't she have one which i think is a good conversation um yeah. but she's like the most dominant player in the w right now right like by like bar none like the Hands best player in the league. yeah yeah she's just unstoppable i was thinking before we started mike i was thinking about like prepping people for the season and i was like i i just i think i have to be honest that no one can stop asia wilson she's the best she's she just seems to be getting better and she's already so good it's incredible incredible to watch because like the liberty only kind of had a chance because Chelsea Gray got hurt. Like, right. That was the only, like, that was the only reason that we're like, oh, well, maybe. But then even when that happened, right? It's Chelsea Gray, right? I didn't mess yeah, up. It was yeah. Chelsea, Chelsea Gray and I think Kia Stokes. So they had two of their starters were benched. Um, so we were all like, this is gonna, this is yeah. it. It's there. gonna happen. <laughs> we'll but take it. Yeah. Again, I think like talking about the chemistry of the aces, they were able to bring their bench players in. And I, you know, I'm a Liberty fan. Yeah. They're very close to me, but I think interpersonally they have no chemistry. <laughs> like yeah. there's like no camaraderie from what I can see. Uh, if I can be, if I can throw shade right now. And I'm like, that throw is, it. that's part of the reason why I don't think that they, you know, did what they were supposed to do is because I don't think you can't just force people to be a super team and like expect it to immediately be like, there's trust. There's like, you know, yeah. there's chemistry. There's all these yeah. things. And I just don't think that they, they had what people thought they would have immediately. Yeah. I've been to Harold yeah. Knight. No, I know that's right. Hey, we got, <laughs> we got any info fans in the chat? Drop a drop a yes and give us a one word <laughs> suggestion. In the chat. Yeah, yeah, come on. I just, I but, think, go ahead. Oh, it's just that's such a good point, Kelsey. It's like Asia Wilson, Jackie Young, Kelsey Plum. Is that it? They've all been number one draft picks in pretty fairly recent years in the last seven years and the ace has got all of them and it's like they drafted a team versus the liberty who you know free agents chose to come there because i yeah. think because josiah is investing in the team and they have mm -hmm. an opportunity to do something special but those are two very different ways to form a team and i think they 
there's no shortcuts to like getting to know how to play with people and developing chemistry. Yeah. Yeah. Th those are great points. I mean, and Kelsey Plum too, like not immediately becoming a superstar, like having to, I think that also helps too, because it like, wasn't like, Oh, I'm an MVP candidate or anything. Like she really had to like find out her role. I mean, it felt like it was the Olympic run that she had and that kind of like propelled her into this next stage in her professional career. Um, not the, did they call it the three on three? I forget what the whatever yeah, that she was, was on. The she was on the three on three. Yeah. Yeah. And then that kind of like propelled everything, but that that helps with those chemistry. I was going to say, I'm actually glad you brought up the vibe thing. I so I've been saying because we I started going to Liberty Games before the arrival of Brianna Stewart and John Quill Jones, and in all the games that I went to, Stephanie Dolson was like the Liberty, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then last year was not. But was still there. And I was like, man, that I mean, like she was not like the focal point. I felt like was not maybe the first person to get the microphone if they were doing like a talk to the audience or whatever. And I was like, I wonder, I, I mean, I didn't read anything otherwise, but like I wondered if that like messed with the chemistry a little bit where like the person who was the team is now like really forced to take a super back seat uh, and now is on another team. Yeah, she was also injured for a lot of the season as well, um, which I know like probably kept her out of like being towards the, you know, in the spotlight more. Um, but I'm so sad that she's going to the Mystics because like you said, she was like so fun. A, a personality hire yeah. is what I think the Liberty yeah. need. They need someone who's gonna, you know, bring everybody together now that she's gone and Dee has gone. It's like they need a it's not gonna be Sabrina. I know that's right. It's not Sabrina. No. Sabrina's a robot. No. Love her, but yeah, love her. Just... I mean, she is a robot, and we love that she can robotically hit threes. But she's I saw her in that commercial with who's the guy on the mix? Jalen Brunson. Jalen Brunson. Oh, yeah. neither of them should be acting and stuff though. Oh, I I thought he had uh, to be honest. Oh yeah, I mean, I, I think yeah, he's very, uh, he is very likable. I do, uh, he is very likable. I, but I maybe I it was just because he was next to Sabrina. Yeah, that's that just very, makes... he seemed very charismatic. Um, Man, I was at, um, I was in Indiana for the uh, NBA All Star Game weekend this year, and I was like five rows back for the Steph and Sabrina shootout. And man, I, I mean, I'm always starstruck every time I see Steph. But Sabrina, like when Sabrina gets into a rhythm, it is just, oh, it's like, a, and it, it happens at Barclays too. Like she hits yeah. like two threes and then she pulls up for that third one. You could feel like the whole room, the whole mm -hmm. arena like comes together. It is so fun watching her, but you are absolutely right. I've never seen a Sabrina interview where I've been like, this is my captain. <laughs> like, I, yeah. just, <laughs> I love her. No. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. I know we talk. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, just like I don't know who who can step up on the Liberty and like be that be that captain. I guess Dewey to a certain extent, but I don't know. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a little nervous for Maybe Stewie this you year. Like yeah, it's, I don't think so. I don't think so. My job, it's Ellie, probably. If we're being yeah, honest. honestly, yeah. Ellie is Ellie. Ellie is the personality hire. The personality like, thank hire God for Ellie. Yeah. And if, if anybody from the Liberty organization comes across this, I can't stress enough. You don't need to bring in musical artists for halftime. We don't need it. It it like sorry, little Kim. We don't need little Kim. We need little Ellie. <laughs> Just let Ellie go. Yeah, really. We don't need it. We it's it's the always the best tough. mascot in the league. And the I think best mascot in any league. I think it's amazing. For sure. For sure. Um so I was there... very starstruck to see her at the draft. Yeah, I'm always starstruck to see Ellie. Come yeah, on. it was pretty. It was pretty good. I did. I I, think I told you this. I was like, I got. I feel like we got to let Ellie know that we talked about them to the New York Times. <laughs> like, I yeah, I talked about you. You know. Yeah. And I think Kelsey, you were saying you were trying to get. You were like looking under the hood. You. Were like, yeah, I was it. trying to see. It's like that's the big mystery of like who who is Ellie. Uh, and I was trying, but I couldn't see nothing beyond her head. Oh, yeah. That's what I said. <laughs> if you told me they were. Like uh, a 24 year old former D2 running back, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like Towson yeah. University in Maryland. I would have been like, Yeah, for sure. <laughs> like, or if you told me they were uh, an ex dancer for the Knicks, I would believe yeah. that too. Like, just range, they got range, yeah, so strong to be able to do everything that Ellie does in that heavy of a costume. Like, you have to be some sort of former yeah. athlete or you know, something incredible. 
Uh, any other uh, storylines heading into this season that you're excited about before we try to pick some teams for some people? Uh, I'm excited for Teresa Weatherspoon to start coaching the mm -hmm. Chicago Sky. This will be mm -hmm. her first season as the head coach. She was an assistant coach for the Pelicans, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And then, an, of course, an amazing player in her own right. So, I yeah, I always love a player turned coach. I think that's yeah. That. Something special, yeah. That's a good one. I was seeing a clip. I think, I think it was Witherspoon hitting a half court shot at the buzzer in the finals. Yeah, um, yeah. I saw that going around yesterday or two days ago, which was cool to see that because I probably haven't seen that since that finals, like on TV. It was Liberty versus the Comets. Shout out to the from the Comets. Shout to out the, to the Comets. There yeah. you go, DJ Local. Mm -hmm. yep. Um, all right, let's let's try to pick some teams for some people because I this I did this with uh the Premier League because I was not really a soccer fan but was trying to be a soccer fan and I I remember like reading a bunch of stuff being like how do I pick my team and I feel like this could be a fun way to do it so I put together some prompts you you all haven't seen these yet uh okay. so I'll just I'll just throw some at you and uh if you don't have an answer right away that's okay uh, but I, what I, what I did, what I tried to do is take the Liberty and the Aces off the board right away. Cause I feel like people know those teams. I feel like that's also cheating. That's like coming into baseball. Like, well, I'm a Yankees fan. And I was like, yeah. we're not going to, let's not do that. But okay. So if I was coming in and I was looking for a good team, but not a great team. The Dallas wings. That's what right, I would say. Sell me on the wings. Uh, the Wings are, they were in a rebuilding year last year. They got a new coach named Latricia Trammell, who is from Oklahoma, I think was a, a basketball coach in Oklahoma for women's basketball. Uh, she's their new head coach from last year and sort of molded a team uh, that had some new draft picks, that had some trades and like made them, they were in the semifinals for like the first time in the franchise history. Uh, so I think they have... Um, uh, some really amazing players. Satu Sabali was most improved player of the year. Right. Uh, they have Arike Agumbawale, who is amazing to watch. Um, yeah, Former? they are. No, sorry. I'm She's just, Notre I'm Dame. Sorry. Notre Dame. And her brother is a football player and kicked like a crazy field goal, I think. I don't if, if, Oh, yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. He's yeah. not a kicker, but they like needed a, a kicker in the moment. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Is, um, is Michaela on your? I'm gonna screw up the last. On your where? On your yeah. On the wings. She's on Phoenix. Uh, Mercury. Phoenix. Okay, my bad. My bad. Or did she get traded to Chicago? Oh, I don't know. She, I just remember former Liberty grade. Yeah, she, she was, was on. The, she was I rookie of the year. Yeah. Oh yeah, she's going to the sky. This guy, but yeah, that's another example. Rookie of the year, and then on another team, like a year or two yeah. later, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah, uh, he was traded. Part of that, they, all those trades that happened to bring John Quell. Yeah. Um, I mean, I guess Dewey was a free agent, so there weren't trades. But I guess John Quell trade. The John yep. Quell trade was. Yeah. All right, I like that one. So Dallas Wings, Amelia, do you uh, do you have one as well, or would you uh, concur with Dallas Wings? You know, I was going to say the Dallas Wings, but I. Speaking of Anuera, I think Chicago has – there's such low expectations for Chicago because of, like, they gave up a lot to get Marina Mabry a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. um, I think they were in such a rebuilding year last year, but I think they've got – they drafted well. Um, they've got young talent. I think they've got this coach that I'm excited about. I don't know. I think this is a team that, like, you know – Ride with them. Maybe this isn't their year, but like in a couple of years, maybe yeah. they're like a really solid team. Yeah, be great. like aces. The aces were not good a few years ago, right. and now they've won back-to-back -back titles. So, like, get in on the ground floor with this team. Is what I All think. right, this is a good transition, and I realized too. I put together a bunch of prompts, and I was like, there are twelve teams, and I already took two off the board. So there might be some overlap. <laughs> you can That's use fine. the same team again. That's fine. Um, so this that this might be the same answer, but what about like maybe not a good team, but like a young fun team? I think Indiana probably. Yeah. You know that it's a very young team. They have Aaliyah Boston, who was the number one draft pick last year. They have Grace Berger, who's a, a younger player. Um, it's just very young and very fun. And I think there's they have a, still have a lot of joy when they play, which I think is really fun. And a fairly new coach. Um, 
So I hate to be like, you know, the team that everybody knows because of Caitlin Clark, but I do think that they're, they're young and fun. Yeah. Yeah. And once again, that was going to be my answer, but I think, <laughs> um, <laughs> I think the LA Sparks could, could be another young, oh, I think Cameron Brink and Rikia Jackson both, both went there. Yeah. Um, uh, Ari McDonald, who was a very exciting player that came into the league a few years ago is there now. I think they just, they're going to be fun. I don't know if they're going to be good, but like, I think they'll yeah. be fun to watch. Yeah. And they were good for so long. I, I think Holly wrote, somebody was saying that at the draft being like, uh, how, like a once dominant team, how do you bring back that? that energy to the sparks yeah. which then led me to ask you about liz cambage uh that's that's how that all happened that talk time. about a freaking personal life story if you want to <laughs> yeah. really learn about one of the Google most on. one of yeah. the most wild players from the w no longer yeah. a player for the w refuses to come back uh look up liz cambage yeah if, if liz you're cambage like is Oh, go ahead, Mike. Go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, if you're like the NBA, is so dramatic, we need some drama in the WNBA. Yeah, yeah, yeah same. Google, just Google Liz. We can point you to her. Yeah, yeah, she's like sort of the Voldemort of our podcast. We talk about <laughs> her all the time, but then I always end up editing it out because I'm like, I can't invoke. You know what? You want to make sure she's not <laughs> listening. <laughs> yeah, and Liz, if you're in the chat, we do love you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, she's playing in China right yes. now. Not sure what time it is there, so we're not sure. She almost killed somebody in a game the other day. <laughs> yeah. I, that was, that's what was so funny. I was only remembering what happened like a year and a half, two years ago, and you were like, oh, yeah, she was just in the news. Yeah. She was, I think it was the finals in the league she's playing in, in China, and she was having a great series, but she got kicked out of the game for, from all angles, it looked horrific. Like, she just, hit somebody in the throat with her elbow yeah <laughs> um I mean, i'll oh sorry go ahead dude she's she's six eight i believe mm -hmm. like <laughs> if i was six eight i would be very careful with my elbows just out of respect for yeah problems, i think Oh, I wish I was six eight. Um, I I don't know if if you have insight on this. Cool. If not, don't worry about it. But I'm gonna share uh, DJ locals. He said, "Does the cap make it hard to?" uh keep say a top rookie because i know we had like mentioned that rookies were bouncing around a lot i always assumed it was just because there's constantly like a level tier type players coming in but i am not familiar with like the salary cap or anything like that i don't think the salary cap makes it hard. like you know they're all when you get drafted you and you're a rookie you sign a four-year contract if you're like i think what is it like first round drafts mm -hmm. they sign four-year contracts everybody else maybe not even the full first round. Um, so I don't, it, it really, I don't think, um, unfortunately salary cap doesn't make anything. Nobody's moving for, to get paid more. Right. Yeah. Right. If any, if anything, they're moving to get paid less. Right. Yeah, I feel like, like that's I, what, Stewie, yeah. what Stewie did. Yeah. And Stewie did this, yeah. Yeah. They took salary cuts so they could come play in New York. I think the thing that is lucrative to players because they're going to get paid low no matter what is the facilities it's mm -hmm. you know where the city that you're playing in the housing that you're getting like it's the other perks that i think you'll lose a rookie for not the not the salary That's yeah i wish that i knew more about the the salary structure and, and salary cap but there is a really good documentary on tubi called uh shattered shattered glass that thing mm -hmm. like healthy yeah <laughs> it talks about, it talks about the um like the collective bargaining agreement and kind of some of the barriers to paying the players more that, that the league is facing. So check that out if you're yeah. interested. We're, you big, check... we're big sports docs fans. I, was, so yeah. I got a <laughs> I was... lot of recommendations. If you've got the time to watch a documentary, just let us know what you want. I was going to say I'm you checked with business, shattered yeah. glass. Yeah. I was going to say you checked with Kelsey like she made it. Yeah. <laughs> like you're like shattered glass, right, Kelsey? <laughs> well, we watched it together just, yeah. um, you know, very intently. Yeah. 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 But to, to the salary cap stuff, I feel like maybe we start hearing more about it now uh, with more eyeballs on the game. And just with, I mean, how annoyingly everybody talked about uh, Caitlin Clark's salary uh, or lack thereof or then too much of it. Like, I, I feel like we'll start, maybe there'll be more dialogue around it. Um, I'd prefer that than our friend, a uh, friend, uh, Greg Doyle from the uh, Indianapolis Star, which I'm sure you saw those that insane 
insane oh. question. Uh, Kelsey. Oh, is he the one that did? Yeah. Thing? Yeah, that's gross. Like the, what are we doing? What are we Harassing doing? Harassing young women in their workplace? That's what we're doing, Mike. Oh, yeah. I gotta, I gotta tell my Paige Becker story. Like, just don't take the photo, man. Like, just, <laughs> yeah, honestly, <laughs> come on, it's awful. And he wrote a piece today that was like, so how I became part of the story. I'm like, just, just come on, man, come on. It's so bad, so bad. Yeah. Um. All right, I, we shouldn't have said his name. Uh. All right, let's. Uh. I, I, I feel Voldemort. Like, yeah, yeah, that's another yeah. Voldemort. <laughs> I feel like I'm gonna combine the last two because I had like a masochist team. Uh, but instead, what I'm gonna mm. I'm gonna combine that. I'm gonna combine with my last one. So, uh, all right, before my last two more, and I feel like you might have already addressed it. We talked about Witherspoon. Oh, a chaotic coach team. I feel like sometimes like a personality sometimes is around a coach being like a little nutso on the sidelines. Mm. Is there anybody that like takes the cake? If you're like, I'm a big. I'm a big coach. <laughs> I'm a big coach fan. Well, thank you, Hammond. Okay. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> Becky Hammond is like one of the only coaches that has been thrown out of a game that I am aware of in the WNBA, but she learned from pop who I feel like gets thrown out all the time. So um, she's what the one that's like, I love when I'm at an aces game. I love just like watching her on the sideline because she gets so, sharp. so upset. She's always just like, yeah. I yeah. Becky Hammond for Halloween this year. And I just, <laughs> there's like a, a moment from last season where like, Asia Wilson and like, players had to literally hold Becky back because they were like, you're going to get thrown out. We're going to get a tech. Like you can't like do that. Um, so I would say Becky Hammond is a coach. I love and Latricia Tramble is really fun. too. That's yeah. a good one. Latricia Tramble's funny. I would say Becky, Becky can be funny, but that's not her thing. Becky's intense. Um, yeah. Yeah. But, I, but Latricia Tramble is funny. Like she, She'll make you laugh on the sidelines. Yeah, sure. she was like, she. There's a great video going around from the draft of her chugging champagne. Like it's just, she's just like very fun. But she, yeah, yeah, highly recommend checking out Latricia Trammell. Becky Hammond was on ESPN. I want to say like a couple months ago. Which I will say, more uh, former W players or coaches or current W players are way better at TV than a lot of these <laughs> former basketball uh, NBA players. Like it's night and day, but Becky went on ESPN and was just like, Jalen Brunson is probably too short to be the best player on a team. I was like, yeah, yeah, let's go. I love that because she's also short and was still calling yeah. it out. And I was like, that's, it was incredible. It was incredible. TV. She knows better than anybody. Yeah. Yeah. She's five, five. And she got flamed. Yeah. Yeah. She, she, she got flamed for it on the internet and still stood by it. It was so good. I loved it so much. Yeah. I'm, I love Becky Hammond. Um, all right, the last one here. So here we go. I'm a Paige Beckers fan, so I want to get a head start rooting for the team that will most likely draft her uh, next year. Oh my gosh, who's going to be one of the who's bad teams that? this season? Uh, <sighs> I could see, I'm just thinking of like teams. I feel like maybe the, ooh, I think Atlanta Dream might be pretty bad this season. Atlanta dream every uh, they it was like two years ago they had like 45 first round pick just... yeah yeah they got Ryan Howard who is a yeah. uh, number one draft pick um I feel like it's also just like a, a franchise where they're not investing in it like they play at an arena that I think the max amount of people that can be there is like 9,800 <laughs> like it's so small um yeah. so just thinking of like who they drafted uh you know, I don't know if they'll they'll be they might be in like the bottom and get in the lottery for a first round draft pick. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's funny. There's so many I feel like last year kind of everybody was like it's gonna be the Aces or the Liberty. But I feel like now Seattle's looking good, Phoenix is looking pretty good. So I don't know who's gonna be it's possible I I mean Chicago and LA I think could go either way like they could be kind yeah. of a mid team or they could be at the bottom what's connecticut connecticut lost their like point guard what yeah they lost beck out? allen um yeah maybe connecticut might be bad this season i don't know i'm just trying to like playoff like, last year, also, last year but it, it could be bad yeah it could also be like a beautiful storyline for Paige beckers to go from yukon to connecticut's son like i i tell you somebody from the northeast 
that would be my nightmare. If I had just done four years at UConn, they're like, I got to stay. And now I can at a casino, like a plane at a casino. Yeah. Like, I'm like, just send me to a city, please. Well, yeah. We oh, went to a, a sun game and it was very depressing. Like, dang, they just have to like hang out in like yeah. this in random casino. area of Connecticut. Oh, yeah. And when you're in that arena, it's not bad. Like that's like a pretty good place to see a game. But the second you leave, it's just like, also, Sarah Shell says Lynx. She's a, a Minnesota native. There you go. Yeah, that's true. I mean, the Lynx, a lot of their – is it the Lynx took a lot of the Skies players from last year or the yeah. other way around, Kelsey? They got, some some pretty good, they got some pretty good players this year because the Sky wanted to be able to make sure they had a better draft pick, so they got a lot of good Sky players. Um they also just drafted Alyssa Pelio, who is like very exciting um, from yeah. Utah. So they could be good this year, but I think they also might be in a rebuilding year. I think there's teams that could be good, but but it's like you know somebody's got to be bad. Somebody's got to be the worst. Someone's got to be the stinker. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah. Someone's got to be dead last. And I don't yeah. know if we you you all would know better than I would. Have we ever seen a team like? Like, did the fever shut it down early this past year because they were like, let's go get Caitlin Clark? Or were they just like straight up bad the whole time? Well, it is like, it's a lot. It's similar with the NBA. I think it's a lottery, right? Like you it draw is. for, yeah. But so, you have a bet. It's weighted, right? So like if you are the worst team, you have a higher chance to to get that pick. I probably. think so. Yeah, there's yeah. like more uh, probability. But yeah, so it's. I think the honestly, I think the Fever had like their best season ever last year. Yeah. Right? Like since since like you know oh, they wow. won the championship a while ago, but uh, they had like one of their most winningest seasons. Uh, they almost and beat they the Liberty the of the year. <laughs> like yeah, so yeah. I feel like they were like really busting ass. I feel like through the whole thing. It would be fun too if just Juju decided she was coming out. I don't know if they there's rules again. Like you have to play at least three years. You have um, to be, you have to play all four years and be, oh, you have to play all four. You can't leave early at all. No, unless so you're, can't... I think, um, unless you're like, you have to be turning 22, uh, in the year of your rookie season to be able to play in the WNBA. So for the most part, that means you've played four seasons of college basketball. I just don't like dumb rules. I know. But also it's like, I don't want people to declare their freshman year because there's not that many spots, like, sure. you know? So it's yeah. like, I think if we had as many teams as the NBA has, like, sure. Let people like sure. play one year and then decide they want to declare for the draft. Yeah. But it's like, there's well, not you, that many spots. And also we need to make like, um, I, I, I saw a quote Gino today was like, I think the one and done has ruined men's college basketball. So if you want to see women's college basketball get ruined, Let's do one and done for the WNBA. Like, yeah, it did. It it did. I mean, I think until the money catches up to like how much can be made in in college right now for for women's basketball, it really doesn't make sense for them to jump out uh, sooner. But it did. I mean, it definitely did ruin the men's game. But then there's part of me that I'm like, well, these like colleges are making so much money off of these athletes yeah. that I'm like, if you could go get that money professionally, like go go professionally, but. But no, you're right. I mean, the, the men's game sucks. Like the men's game is not fun right now for for a variety of different reasons. Like coaches jump all over the place. There's just like no, there's no continuity. And that's what makes the, yeah. the women's college game so special is that it's like we get to see, like we're like we just saw Juju be incredible in one season. And now we get to watch this like morph into something else year after year, which is going to be pretty fun. Yeah, I do think the changes, though, to the transfer portal, like you don't have to like sit out for a year, like you can just immediately play kind of makes it feel a little bit more transactional now. Like sure. the fact that Haley Van HVL has been able to just jump around to three yeah. different teams and not, I don't know, I feel like it just makes it feel a little bit more transactional as well. But yeah, uh, indeed. That's a good point. And I, I, there's something weird about it happening twice. Like I, I think like yeah. you transfer once and you're like, good, you need to change the scenery, mix it up. When it happened like back to back like that, yeah. I was like, oh man, Haley, what's going you, on? I, yeah. I think it's the Cavender twins. They're yeah. like, they went from Miami to TCU and now they're going back to Miami. Yeah. <laughs> I crazy. can't believe they went to TCU to begin with. That seems like such a, that, such a pivot, such a pivot Yeah, from Miami to Texas Christian. Um, 
All right, this is great. I I've had so much fun. I'm I'm really grateful that uh, not only that you took me to the WNBA draft, uh, but that you you both were willing to come on. And I hope people check it out because there uh, you guys do a lot of very fun stuff over there. But specifically, I think before we go, maybe talk a little bit about the Holly Row that you're putting together because I just think I just think that's something people need to know about. Amelia, Unless you don't want to. Amelia, let that, let that no, no, no. Nobody's right. allowed to steal this idea, though. This Trade, has been trademarked. Trademark, trademark copyright. Yeah. Don't steal it. Unless, print, Holly Rowe, if you're in the chat, you can steal it. But yeah. um, <laughs> we have four seats in a row, season tickets at the Liberty game. So we're trying, and we're, I think, in a shorter row. So that's like a pretty big chunk of the row. And we are going to name our row the Holly Rowe. And we're going to get like a big Holly Rowe cutout head. We might dress up as Holly, get some wigs going, old lip, bright blazer. <laughs> yeah it's, it's really yeah. good wait <laughs> it's gonna what be. was the what was the secondary name that you came up with too was it uh, something to do with uh, rebecca lobo yeah it was like the, the rebecca, rebecca Ro robo or yeah. like, you're like low row or something like that we could it do the ryan what is it ryan root grow oh ryan root grow that's good that's yeah. pretty Although, good yeah we can't can't name it after a dude. I feel like yeah, it's pretty no important man. that we yeah. don't. He do is that. a he is a short king, and I respect him immensely. Sure. He loves he loves the game. So, but yeah, it's got to be a woman. I I don't I don't think I knew how uh, big of fans you were of short kings. And as a five seven <laughs> man myself, I do really appreciate. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Why do you think we're here, Mike? Why do you think <laughs> come on, here? come on, stand up, stand up. Let's do it. Come on, <laughs> I did think it was weird that you made me send like a full scale photo to you guys before agreeing to come onto the show, but we got it. <laughs> um, all right. I dropped a link already. You can find it. Uh, it's the pinned, it's the pinned chat. It's also in the show notes in the description. Uh, but go check out the, uh, their Apple pod or Spotify, wherever you get it, let the girls play pod. You can find their YouTube there, their Instagram there. Uh, but Kelsey and Amelia, seriously, thank you so much for doing this. This was so much fun. Um, anything else you would like to say before we uh, wrap up to plug or to yell about? I don't know. You can get mad about something before we go to if you need to. I don't know. Well, something we always say, we are huge supporters of the W. Any team that you end up following, good. They're all great teams. Everybody's a wonderful player. The coaches rock. The mascots are amazing. The only people who suck are the refs. The refs <laughs> suck in the W. Everyone is the hero involved in the WNBA except the rest. Except the rest. <laughs> I love that because that is a universal thing anybody Absolutely. can get behind. You want a world peace? Just that we can all come together, share mm -hmm. photos of referees we hate. I do think yep, that. Could, Absolutely. Could I got everything. those W ones. I already know they were <laughs> fucking up March Madness too, making the worst. Oh, call, so. March. That was tough. That was yeah. tough. They needed that money. They need to make sure Caitlin Clark got to the finals. Oh, um, no. true. All right, for uh, for Amelia, for Kelsey, the Let the Girls Play pod, please go check it out. Go download their episodes. Uh, they're a lot of fun. I really do appreciate you coming on. Uh, we'll be back next week. Our friend Kevin Forge um, from Windsider, uh, who has an article dropping, I think, on Monday about free agents about to make an impact on the W. So we're going to be talking about that next week. Um, and then for NBA content, we'll be back tomorrow morning at 9. And then there's some games tomorrow night. There's a lot of stuff going on. But uh, I'm now going to stop talking because I've been talking a lot. Thank you again, Kelsey and Amelia, for joining. Yeah. We're out of here. You.